Hey y'all, this is Joe out at the cabin out of St. Bernard Acres. Uh, this is Friday, July 31st, I guess. Oh, oh, okay. We clawed our way through July. Let's see what August is going to give us now. Um, I'm out here at the cabin and I want to show you something. The air conditioner is running. The fan is running. You hear the generator on the porch. It was just for testing. But no extension cords coming through to plug anything in. Guess what? They're plugged into outlets. See that? There's one back there. I don't know if you can see it or not. There. And all along here. And here. I gotta get switch plate cover for this one. And a light for inside and a light for outside when you walk in and in the bathroom area. What I did was come out here and get all the electric set up and do the service panel. My generator is plugged into the receptacle I put outside and that's energizing my service panel. And I am not going to, I thought about this and thought about this. I am not going to do a video showing how I do all this stuff because I can't tell you how to do it. I don't want this to be a how to run electricity in your cabin type video. I'll just show you I did it and uh, the basics of what I did. But you saw I had all the wiring run. Um, what I've got going on here, this 30 amp breaker, I've got my generator coming into and I had to use a double breaker because I needed to energize both sides of the service panel when you get at your house you've got 220 coming in so you've got one hot in this side of the breaker one hot in this side of the breaker well I don't have that luxury here I've only got 120 coming in 110 and it's gonna be the same with my solar when I do it I have to have the same setup um, but I want to energize both sides of the service panel. With electric coming in your house, you've got one line for this side, one line for this side. So I had to kind of fake it out by jumping across with the wire, if you can see that. I don't know if you can or not. And then all of my breakers are set up uh, for my different circuits inside the cabin. But yeah, this was what I did. It's so cool. When I bring my you know, my battery box is going to come here and I'm going to come up the wall and put another double 30 on this side, run my solar into it exactly the same way as I did this, and then I can turn this breaker off, turn my solar on, and run everything off of the solar. So, I'm very happy. And look at that. All of my outlet covers cover everything. I don't have... I did a good job cutting my drywall holes. <laughs> I'm happy with that. But yeah, it's so exciting to have power in these outlets. And just to be able to plug things in. Uh, that was a that was a major step for me. I feel happy. Now I can take the generator when I come out here and put it 30 feet away from the cabin and plug it in. And then I won't even hear it. Uh, and then I'll have everything, you know, all the power inside. I still have to run my lights. I'm trying to figure out what kind of light I want up here and what kind of light I want, you know, the light fixtures. Uh, but I'm also going to be running 12 volt lighting throughout this. Up in the loft will be 12 foot or 12 volt. And that's just going to be in wires on the outside of the wall uh, because the battery bank being here is going to be temporary. I'm going to have a power shed where everything's going to be coming out of. Then i got to figure it out from there. But again, this is just a cabin, you know. If it's got some wires showing, who cares. But most of my lighting will be done 12-volt LED. Uh, but I should have enough once I get all this solar done. Two more batteries. They should be able to run this refrigerator all week long. That's what I'm looking forward to. And I'll tell you how things change. When you, if you guys want to build a cabin like this, 
You have it has to be fluid. Everybody's like, where'd you get your plans? Where are the plans at? There are no plans. This is like as we go along. If you noticed earlier videos, I had this sink up against this window because Gail wanted the sink facing that way. So the refrigerator stuff was going to be on this wall, hence electric on this wall. Well, she changed her mind. Once the sink over here, I had to put the refrigerator over here. Guess what? I ran no electric to that wall. Duh! So, you know, I've got to figure out something else. Yeah, I'll run it underneath the cabinet or something. I don't know. But yeah, your plans have got to be... They're going to change the whole time you're building. Especially the way I did. Uh, just building as I found material. Um... But I'm going to spend the weekend out here again and finish taping and floating what I can. I'll show you. I did part of it last Saturday night. I've got everything, all the drywall up in this bathroom area. I added a window. All the drywall is up. I have an electrical outlet there and a switch for a light in here. Uh, so all of that drywall is done. I'm putting a piece of roofing material down there for looks at the bottom of the pallet wood. Uh, all of my drywall is done in here. I left these rafters open. I'm going to tell you what I did with them. You can see, but I'll explain it to you. The drywall stopped at the bottom of the rafters. So I could put drywall across the ceiling. That was the plan. Just like in here, those are the floor joists from the loft. So what I decided to do was leave these open. I like that openness. And paint it white. It'll make this kitchen area look a little bigger, be a little brighter. And uh, what I did, because behind each one of these was just insulation. Like that, where I have to put a piece of drywall in. But... I went and got a couple of 1x8s that I had down in the barn. And I cut them to fit inside these and screwed them into the top plate. That took care of, you know, just insulation being there or mice coming through. And I did both sides like that. Then that hung down. These are 2x6. I did the 1x8 there so it hung down a couple of inches and I had some 1x6 and I screwed that up into the bottom of this and voila! Space is a premium in a little house like this or in a cabin. Look at this. I have all this 8 inch shelving now that is out of the way. It's not interfering with anything and all of that extra storage. And uh... Then I ran a 1x3 across there just for looks to trim that out. And I said, wow, that comes right to the bottom of the 1x6. That's perfect. So I came down on this end and I used it. <laughs> I cut a couple blocks to cap the ends. So anyway, that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, if you like the open rafter design, there's a bunch of extra storage that I just thought of last weekend while I was sitting here um, and it kind of works with these beams I put in because these beams I put in just because they look cool they weren't necessary but they look cool so I ran them and it kind of ties in with the open rafters but anyway that's what I've been doing I have power out here now and everything works I'm just so happy and we can roll up before I get the solar hooked up we can roll up take the air conditioner all the way down by the shower if I want to and run a plug up to the back of the cabin and we have power the whole time we're out here but yeah this weekend I'm gonna work on trimming here and taping and floating and then next week I'm gonna start working on getting solar power in here to the cabin and into that service panel. But that's my little update for today. Uh, hope y'all enjoyed this. 
Uh, again, if you're subscribed, thank you. If not, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We have fun out here. And it's just going to get to be more and more. Um, so go ahead and subscribe, like, share, comment. Uh, do all those kind of things. And we'll have a blast out here. But this is Joe out at the off-grid cabin at St. Bernard Acres. I'm out.